This is day one of photogrammetry in uh, California. We're gonna do something which is, I've always wanted to do, which is really cool, which is the idea of building a three-dimensional virtual environment in CG that is gonna run on Unity um, as the engine. One of the things that Neil really wanted to do for for this was like, let's go find a real location in the real world and see if there's a way to use that in in the game engine. So the only really way to do that is to digitize <laughs> real life somehow. Photogrammetry is mostly just taking a ton of pictures of static objects and then putting them into a capture program like a Reality Capture, that's the one we use here, and solving those so they end up becoming 3D geometry. And then we can take that, put it in the game, and use that for the environments. And the cool thing is, you can do this at home, like with your phone camera. There's lots of tutorials out there how to do it with a phone camera. And I've gone and done that, and it's just actually like, oh wow, that's pretty neat. For the Prophet Slayer, you're dealing with, with Earth after, after a human caused war that turned into a reliance on technology. The planet is kind of uh, in a state of ruin after the wars. Um, it's, it's arid. There's not a lot of moisture, you know, so immediately you kind of, you, you start knowing roughly where to look. Um, and for us, we had location scouts in, in southwestern America, so it was like Arizona and New Mexico. This one, the one that we picked, ended up being um, sort of three hours from LA. And this, so this is called Eagle Mountain, where this is, where this mine is. And it's a deactivated iron mine, which I love. That's part of the realism that you get from it. Like, would an artist think to put all of these cement um, cylinders here? Like, maybe, maybe not. Uh, there's weird examples of like burnt out, half dead palm trees that are just lying around. You wouldn't, you'd probably put a proper palm tree there. You wouldn't put one that's like, you know, charred and I don't even know what they did to it. I think the US military shot here and burnt one of the palm trees. But you just get that weird randomness built into, you know, you get it for free. We shot. Uh, roughly about 15,000 photos. We had two cameras, myself and Chris, taking seven and a half thousand photos of every kind of nook and cranny strategically around these environments. And then we had, you know, hired drone people to come down there as well. So we just have so many photos and they're all, you know, raw photos essentially, um, that it combines all that information in a, in a way that it boggles my mind how the software actually does it. We ended up in the middle of a heat wave in the States two weeks ago and it was like, cooking hot and I was out there taking photographs doing, you know, a thousand squats in two hours and I could hardly move the next day. You're walking around on the ground taking shots every couple of feet. You want to like 50% overlap, ideally, between each photograph. So you're just basically sidestepping, shoot, sidestep, shoot, sidestep, shoot. It's amazing when you go out and take a bunch of photos and then all of a sudden this stuff just pops up real quick. When you're in reality capture, it's like, oh wow, I can model that that fast. You can see where all the camera nodes were. All, the, all these little things are all the positions of all the cameras as everyone walked around it. So it gives you an idea of how many cameras you need for something that size. Like, it's just, it's not something that we could have done a few years ago. It just wasn't feasible yet. Now that, you know, Unity's invested in the Olympic support, suddenly that door is opened up and that bridge is laid. And now we have that access point where we can get data in. So it's assembling all that data and all that information and creating essentially the exact representation of what we saw on the day. But when we're in the motion capture studio and using a virtual camera, for me it was really trippy to like be standing with the camera and looking and seeing something on a screen which was ex almost identically representative of what I actually stood on the ground on the day and looked at, like yeah. in that light. Call me old fashioned, but it's amazing to me to be able to pick up a virtual camera as a production designer on my prep day and be walking around with, there's no lens, there's no camera, but there's the set, there's a digital set that I'm now basically walking around set dressing a digital set. It's, it's, it's mind blowing to me. I'm excited to see where it ends up. Like I'm genuinely curious, especially with the way that we're, we're using photogrammetry backgrounds that I think look super real bringing in cached simulation robes and cloth. And when all of those elements are together and you start add, adding like lens flares and slight little dust motes or, you know, um, lens effects, that could be a pretty cool combination.